Welcome back. This is Jen Yeager with the Teaching and Learning Alliance. Today I'll share tip number two to support you in preparing for the Foundations of Reading test. Today's tip is all about understanding the difference between phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, and phonics. These concepts are related, but quite different, and it's important to know and really feel confident in, in each of these topics as there are several questions about this on the test. And Understanding phonological awareness, phonemic awareness, and phonics is also central to understanding how children ultimately learn to read. So you'll want to get a blank piece of paper or print the document that's below in the details, and let's get started. Okay, so you, you essentially want to make a T-chart um, in your notes with the left side that says phonological awareness, and we'll get to the right side in a minute. So phonological awareness is a broad term which refers to a set of auditory skills that serve as a foundation for learning to read. And the way you can think about these, these skills under phonological awareness is that the lights are off. You could demonstrate or assess these skills in the dark. And while we don't actually do that in class, that is a way to remember it. When I think about phonological awareness and think about the ways to help you remember what it is and what it's not, think lights off, but also think it's not about the ABCs. It's not about knowing the sounds that go with letters. That's actually phonics. So we'll get to that in a minute, but everything on the left side of your page is an auditory skill that you could demonstrate or assess in the dark. So here's an example, here's a list of phonological awareness skills that run, um, that are in a hierarchy from basic or simple to complex. The first one is rhyming, being able to identify or match rhyming words. The second one is syllables, being able to segment or separate or clap or count syllables in a word. So umbrella, three syllables. Or put your hand under your chin and notice how many times your chin drops down when you say the word umbrella. Umbrella, three times. Three times because there are three syllables. Each syllable contains a vowel sound and when you're when you produce a vowel sound, your jaw drops open to produce that sound. So rhyming and syllables are both examples of basic phonological awareness skills. Counting words in a sentence. And again, since we're talking about an auditory skill, we're thinking about how many words do we hear when a sentence is said auditorily. I went to the park. So when you hear that word orally, um, being able to identify how many words are in that sentence is an example of phonological awareness. I went to the park. Also, onset and rhyme is an example of phonological awareness. So repeat after me in your heads. If I say the word cat, cat, say it again, but don't say the k, what's left, at. So k, at, that's an example of of dividing a word between the beginning of the word and the end of the word. K at. I'll give you another one. Fish. F ish. Say it again, but don't say the ish. What's left? F How about dog? D og. How about street? Stir eat. So the rhyme, which is pronounced, which is actually spelled R I M E, is the vowel to the end of the word, and that's called the rhyme. So being able to segment and manipulate onset and rhyme is an example of phonological awareness. That said, sometimes on the test, onset and rhyme will be referred to as an example of phonemic awareness. Just know that they use those words sometimes interchangeably on the test when referring to onset and rhyme. Lastly, phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is a type of phonological awareness. So that's a place where a lot of people get confused. Rhyming is an example of phonological awareness. Being able to segment, clap, or count syllables is a type of phonological awareness. Counting words in a sentence is a type of phonological awareness. Onset and rhyme, manipulating those sounds, that's a type of phonological awareness. And so is phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness is a type of phonological awareness. What's different is you're now at the point where, where you're manipulating and identifying the individual phonemes, and a phoneme is a sound, in spoken words. So in the word cat, there are three phonemes, k, a, t, or fish, f, i, sh. What's the first sound in fish? F. What's the last sound in fish? Sh. That's phonemic awareness, where you get to the individual sound level. 
One way to remember that, um, just as a little simple mnemonic device, is to notice that in the word phonemic, you can see the word me spelled backward and me is individual. So when you get to phonemic awareness, it is more complex than any of the ones above it because now you're working with the individual sounds and words. What's tricky for test takers sometimes is sometimes it feels like segmenting um, onset and rhyme or identifying a rhyming word may be more complicated. But the way that you wanna think about this on the test is what we know is the cognitive demand um, based on research that shows you which skills are considered more basic and which ones are considered more complex. So anything that falls under this phonemic awareness term is going to be considered more complex than any of the ones above it. There's a list of these um, phonemic awareness examples in Put Rating First, and you will find that within phonemic awareness, there's also a hierarchy from basic, where you just identify the initial sound, to complex, where you hear each individual sound. And that's something you'll wanna to continue to explore and make sure you're really confident in. On the right side of this table, which I'll show you in a minute, um, you have phonics. And before I shift over to that, just want to remind you, you can see this umbrella. This is to remind you that everything that falls under phonological awareness, whether it's rhyming all the way down to phonemic awareness, is a type of phonological awareness where we're talking about an auditory skill only, often demonstrated, to be honest, with objects or pictures, certainly not with the lights off, but the way to remember it is that the skill itself is an auditory skill. And what we're doing is we're helping train the brain to hear and isolate, manipulate those sounds and words so that you can later apply them to the letters that go along with them. When we turn on the lights, that's phonics. And this is where you're applying the auditory skill with the visual, which is the letters. This is about the ABCs. There are many terms for phonics, the alphabetic principle being one, and it's the principle upon which the alphabet works. It's not just knowing the alphabet, it's knowing that the alphabet is, this, is 26 letters that um, represent sounds and combinations of those letters represent sounds put together form words. Decoding is another way to explain phonics. Decoding is breaking the code so that you can read the word. So decoding is reading. Many of us have heard of sounding it out, just sound out the word. That's about using your knowledge of letters and sounds and the patterns and generalizations that determine how those words should be pronounced. Um, that's another example of phonics. Phonetics is another way to call it, say this, phonics. Mapping phonemes to their corresponding letters and letter combinations, that's their graph graphemes um, is another phrase that you may hear that refers again to phonics. So let's just give you an example. In sh, you have two letters, the S and the H. You have just one sound though, the sh sound. So it's one phoneme. And that one phoneme sh is one grapheme. So every phoneme equals a grapheme. Just know that the above terms here are used interchangeably to refer to reading, to sounding out the word, the sounds in words. Knowing this chart, being able to actually create it quickly for yourself to help you answer questions will go a long way. In one of my next tips, I will go through a couple of the practice questions to show you how I use this chart to support um, answering the multiple choice questions. Hope you find this useful. Again, if you're interested in more, including um, joining me for a live, um, a live course, short course, including some pre-recorded modules, you'll wanna check out the information about that below.